Unit 15, the New Deal. Learning objectives. We're going to talk about Franklin Roosevelt's efforts to recover, provide relief, and to reform the United States because of the Great Depression. We're going to analyze Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal programs. We'll look at the effects of these New Deal policies and some of the controversies uh, surrounding FDR's New Deal policies. So if you recall from our previous lecture, Herbert Hoover struggled with the Great Depression. He attempted many things to help the United States recover, but in the end, he really failed to communicate with the American people and to show any type of empathy for their struggles. So in 1932, Herbert Hoover is up against Franklin Roosevelt from New York. Franklin Roosevelt is far more the effective politician, and he knows how to speak to the American people, and he promises the public a new deal. Well, Franklin Roosevelt's rhetoric helps him get elected, and so in 1933, Roosevelt begins experimenting various programs and efforts to help boost the country out of the Great Depression. The New Deal consisted of three avenues, programs designed to provide relief to the American people, programs designed to help the economy recover, and programs to help reform some of the institutions that uh, could not perform effectively because of the Great Depression or helped cause the Great Depression. Now, FDR is going to believe in uh, expanding the government uh, to combat the Great Depression. And the government's going to become more active. Uh, the federal government becomes more active and direct than any previous uh, administration or government run prior to Franklin Roosevelt's presidency. Let's start with Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt, a distant relative to Theodore Roosevelt, he's often referred to as FDR. He was an American politician uh, he was governor of New York, and he will defeat Herbert Hoover in the 1932 presidential election. Franklin Roosevelt was actually Herbert Hoover's um, preferred candidate to run against. Um, during the summer of 1932, FDR spent far more time campaigning than Herbert Hoover and Herbert Hoover uh, continues to struggle with Great Depression issues such as the Bonus Army. Um, this allows for Franklin Roosevelt to defeat Hoover in the election, becoming the 32nd president of the United States. And during his inaugural address, he speaks directly to the American people, talking about providing relief, and how the only thing Americans have to fear is fear itself. So FDR, uh, with many advisors and uh, from the top fields uh, in American policy making and economics, starts to build a plan that will become known as the New Deal. And it's a collection of uh, government actions and agencies that are created. 
and many of them were created during the first 100 days of his presidency. Direct action that he takes to combat the Great Depression. Uh, one of the first things that he does is he declares a bank holiday where all the banks who had been under a tremendous amount of stress uh, were closed and they were given time to be uh, inspected directly by the federal government and the ones that were sound financially were allowed to reopen. This was designed to restore Americans' confidence in its banking system. He creates the Civilian Conservation Corps to get the unemployed young men out of the cities to help restore nat America's natural resources. He passes the National Industrial Recovery Act to help boost America's flailing industries. He passes the Emergency Railroad Transportation Act, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the Emergency Farm Mortgage Act, Tennessee Valley Authority Act, the Farm Credit Act. So you'll see that he is targeting all sectors of the United States, all, these, all the sectors that were struggling. And I previously mentioned the Emergency Banking Act. So he's focusing on helping farmers, helping our, the banks, helping the unemployed. Now, he didn't believe in, uh, it went against uh, American ideals to just provide money to Americans. He all the programs to provide relief from unemployment required working, such as the Civilian Conservation Corps. Franklin Roosevelt uses radio incredibly effectively in an incredibly effective way. He gives more than 30 radio talks to the American people that become known as fireside chats. After his first fireside chat in the first month of his presidency in March 1933, he gets more than 400,000 letters from the American people who had listened. He is able to speak and sympathize with the American people. And through his fireside chats, he develops uh, strong loyalties from the average American. And he gets over 400,000 letters. Herbert Hoover's administration had one person who responded and corresponded with uh, Americans who wrote letters to Herbert Hoover. Franklin Roosevelt has to hire more than 100, 100 people to correspond with uh, the American people who wrote letters to him. That shows us uh, her Franklin Roosevelt's uh, ability to speak and connect with the average American. The Agricultural Adjustment Act. So the farming sector was struggling greatly from overproduction, uh, lack of demand. So we have the Agricultural Adjustment Act, a very controversial New Deal program. It was designed to boost agricultural prices by reducing surpluses. So every fourth acre, every fourth plot of land was tilled up to reduce supply, therefore boosting demand. The government bought livestock for slaughter and paid farmers not to plant. The Civilian Conservation Corps was a relief program that gave millions of young men employment on environmental projects. Tennessee has a wonderful state park, Pickett CCC Park. It was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. If you ever are able to visit this park, it's in Fentress County. All of the original CCC buildings are still there. They planted trees, built trails, roads, and bridges. 
and it's all about conservation of the natural environment, conserving our natu natural environment. And this stems all the way back to previous conservation efforts from presidents like Theodore Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson pass passing the National Parks Act. The Fair Labor Standards Act. This establishes a minimum wage, overtime pay eligibility, child labor standards. So he strengthens the labor sector. This is the beginning of minimum wage. Provide an attempt to provide fair pay to the American worker. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So if you recall from our previous lecture, when the banks began closing because of uh, the loans that they were making and the fact that so many of their loans were being used to speculate on the stock market, which led to the banks collapsing and Americans making runs on their banks to get their savings out. Well, one of the things that's uh, created is the FDIC, part of Roosevelt's plan to restore Americans' confidence in their banking system, was to ensure Americans' deposits so that if the bank were to close, they would have insurance that their deposits could be refunded to them. And that way you wouldn't have to worry about your bank going under or closing because the government had insured your savings. And the government would be able to pay you the money that you'd lost if your bank were to fail. So knowing that, knowing that your money is insured will help you be more confident in the bank that you're using. The National Recovery Administration the NRA was a prime New Deal agency established in 1933. The goal was to eliminate competition, which when you think about it kind of goes against a lot of our capitalist uh, beliefs uh, by bringing industry, labor and government together to create codes of fair practices and to set prices. This was to prevent uh, companies from running other companies out of business and therefore creating more unemployment and damaging the economy. The Securities and Exchange Commission. So this was securities and we're talking about the stock market, equities, stocks. This was a government agency responsible for protecting investors maintaining fair and orderly functioning of the securities market. And this was created because of the stock market crash in October of 1929. So this was another way to restore America's faith in its stock exchanges. The Social Security Act, probably one of the most important New Deal programs. If we're talking about the legacy of the New Deal, this still exists today. It established a system of old age benefits for workers. Now, unlike uh, Western European countries that had similar uh, so social security programs, this one you had to work to receive benefits. You are getting money taken out of your paychecks that go into Social Security. And so when you reach a certain age, you can start getting paid back the money that you put in. This was to protect uh, Americans when they turned old and could no longer work. They had security, knowing that they wouldn't be homeless or lose their home or be able to feed themselves. But Roosevelt insisted that Americans had to work to receive these benefits. So that's why it's taken out of your paycheck. He knew that the American people wouldn't want Social Security to be directly funded uh, by the United States government like it was in other countries. The Tennessee Valley Authority. This agency was designed to 
assist one of the poorest regions uh, in the United States, the Tennessee Valley region, which suffered from uh, flooding, uh, lack of electricity, lack of employment opportunities. And so what the TVA did was it built dams, 19 dams, along these rivers that run through the Tennessee Valley. These dams provided flood control, electricity, and jobs. Most of this region did not have electricity until Tennessee Valley authorities created. Now this program still exists today and it's out of all the New Deal programs, this is one where it's more of a national, nationalized uh, industry in this region over electricity. The Works Progress Administration. This was a large scale public works program to provide jobs to the nation's unemployed. So public buildings, courthouses, libraries, bridges, roads, airports, you name it, the WPA was building it if it was something that was going to be used by the public. It creates a national public works identity for the country. So we have all these structures being built. It's a huge undertaking to provide jobs to the millions of Americans who are unemployed. Now, because of the expansion of government, even though FDR was very careful to make sure that these programs weren't too big or too intrusive and were kept apart, some Americans feared this large expansion of the government. This is really when our deficits begin to expand and it's really no longer possible to keep a balanced budget, which was one thing that Herbert Hoover and previous presidents uh, made sure to do. And there was a fear of socialism, public ownership of industry and production but really one of the only things that we're seeing with that was TVA. But a lot of Americans uh, disagreed with this rapid growth of the federal government. Uh, conservatives wanted a, a smaller government. Well, some of FDR's programs were quite controversial. And what ends up happening is the Supreme Court starts uh, ruling them unconstitutional, like the Agricultural Adjustment Act. FDR feared his New Deal would be destroyed, so he came up with a plan to add additional Supreme Court justices to the Supreme Court, and these justices would all be loyal to FDR, and they would vote yes on his New Deal programs and his, his legacy, the legacy of these programs would continue. Well, it was incredibly unpopular and it uh, doesn't happen. <clears throat> it's one of FDR's great blunders was trying to pack the Supreme Court. But uh, luckily for FDR, many of the justices who opposed his New Deal programs were old and they retired. And FDR was able to replace them with pro New Deal justices. Let's look at our timeline. 1933, Franklin Roosevelt's presidency starts. That's when we have the first 100 days of the New Deal. So we had all those programs previously mentioned, like the Civilian Conservation Corps, TVA. Two years later, we had the Social Security Act is passed. The Works Progress Administration is created. 1936, FDR easily wins re-election because he's so incredibly popular and we talk about his ability to really connect with the American people and his ability to really campaign. He was a true politician. Uh, 1937 FDR attempts to pack the Supreme Court. 
and then we'll start talking about uh, World War II begins in 1939 when Germany invades Poland and FDR wins an unprecedented third term in 1940 to show that he uh, demonstrates his continued popularity despite the fact that the New Deal fails to get the United States out of the Great Depression. It won't be uh, until we begin manufacturing arms and weapons for World War II that the United States truly recovers from the Great Depression.